Welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to be handling another quick tutorial about how to paint smoke in your digital paintings. Now this isn't gonna be the end all be all of how to paint like all kinds of smoke. Now for that, you're probably gonna to wanna to learn how to paint clouds as well. And that's gonna be in another tutorial. So don't worry about that, got you covered. But instead this is gonna be like more of like the kind of single strand of like smoke of like a cigarette or or like the spirit coming out of the mouth or some kind of weird Harry Potter stuff. However you want to use it, that's going to be up to you. This is just a simple, quick little guide. And so saying all that, let's get started. Okay, so if we're going to look at smoke effects, kind of like the single strands, kind of like that mystical stuff, uh, first let's take look at some, um, some decent uses that you can probably figure out a way to use these for. For example, this is my latest piece I did uh, just the other night. And this is pretty much how it is going to be. I'm not really planning on keeping the smoke effects in that piece, but you can see that it would add a pretty cool, like mystical kind of texture and feel for it. And that's a great, probably a fantastic use for this kind of stuff. For example, here is an excellent example of that. Uh, here's a piece I did a while ago of, uh, of Nocris. He's a character in Destiny. And if we add a cool spiritual smoke effect to his hands, it looks like he's harnessing some kind of magical energy. And it can also be used really well to add a certain accent to a piece. Like for example, if we add the smoke effect to this kind of samurai, it sort of draws more attention. It adds a little bit of, of little, it adds some foreground and it really kind of fits pretty well with the atmosphere. So let's take a look at making it for ourselves. So here's a piece I did quite a while ago of, a, of an orc warlock kind of situation. I figured this would be a perfect one to add the smoke effect to. So to get started, what you're gonna wanna do is grab this brush right here, it's one of the default brushes. It's called the Hard Round Pressure, Opacity, and Flow. It's again, one of the default like six brushes that everybody gets in Photoshop. It's not that hard to find. Uh, also, one of the big key things that you gotta wanna make sure to do with this brush in this particular technique is to turn off pressure sensitivity. Uh, the flow and opacity should be fine, but if you make sure that's turned off, it should come up looking like this. So the lighter you press, the more faint it is but the harder you press, it becomes more solid and vice versa when you get softer. So that is the key to making uh, smoke in this style. It is just a simple default brush and anybody can use it. The way smoke behaves, we know it goes up and away, whichever direction the wind is blowing. And for this one, I think I'm, it's probably gotta be really good if I actually go kind of like that because that's how smoke behaves. So if you're wanting to have a more mystical kind of situation, you can have smoke behave abnormally, and that's a good way, that's a perfect indicator that something spooky's going on. So if a smoke was like doing this kind of stuff, then you know like that's, that's not normal or natural smoke. And it could also give a, a real mystical, magical kind of feel because people know that that's not how smoke reacts to just wind or anything like that. And they know something crazy is going on. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. But for this, we're just gonna have some basic kind of smoke to it. So let's start, remember, up and away. I'm thinking just kind of like, a little bit like that. Draw a basic shape of how smoke reacts. If you don't like that, you can change it however you'd like. Uh, but just kind of, and, and, and don't press too hard, so don't make it constantly solid, because that's another key reason this technique works great, is, is vary yourself in pressure. So it doesn't constantly look just like a smudge. <laughs> You're gonna wanna make sure that you have room to work. So if we just kind of go over the same areas a little bit, this will set us up for the really fun part. Here's how the whole technique pretty much works. If we switch over to our eraser tool, or by clicking E or however you want to do it, and we get the exact same brush with no pressure sensitivity, and we sort of start cutting away the edges gently, we can sort of start to see the middle area stays a little sharp. So trimming away the area that you don't want is pretty much all you have to worry about. So start trimming around the sides gently. Not, not too gently, otherwise it'll take you a long time. <laughs> but not too firmly, otherwise you're gonna erase all of everything. A good, mid, a good medium pressure is probably 
best for this. Now, one thing we know about smoke is that it tends to have some of it be really transparent and some, it, it almost has like strings if you look at it. Like if you see smoke coming up from a cigarette, you'll be able to tell that there's some kind of thick, uh, thick parts that are really opaque, that aren't, aren't very see-through. And that's one of the easiest things we can use to, to uh, imitate smoke. And so by just trimming off from the sides here, we can make the middle areas, the pieces that of the uh, of the paint that we didn't touch, look uh, more opaque than the rest of it, and this kind of gives it that almost stringy look. And don't be afraid to cut in a little deep. Like, see this hard corner right here? That can often uh, just look cool. <laughs> I mean, painting real smoke is one thing, and it's perfectly fine to paint genuine smoke if you if you uh, if you practice hard and you figure out all the all the little how-tos on everything you need to do about painting smoke. If you paint it authentic, it looks great. However, if you want to paint it stylized, which is pretty much this whole tutorial, and that's definitely something you got to consider. Now, we've done our first pass-through of paint and takeaway, and now we're going to schedule it maybe one or two more times and fill in more gaps or add in other shapes that you might want. So we're going to go back to our brush. We're going to shrink it down a little bit to keep on the detail because we already have our shape. And now all we got to do is find the parts that you want to add to. For example, I want to make this ring here, this loop, a little more, a little thicker. I don't want to take quite as much away from that as I, as I did. I also want to add a little extra here on the side to make it a little thicker. There we go. And now back to the eraser. And here's one of the reasons I really like this brush when you're doing smoke textures is because if you got a shape like this and you just make a brush and it's kind of thin on the outside and thick on the inside and all you have to do is just erase a bit there and erase a bit there and, and, it, and it ends up having these streaks. This is also a great way I paint hair. Uh, so these streaks <laughs> is, is the genuine secret of painting uh, the kind of mystical smoke effect. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all you got to worry about. Another thing you might want to consider is that smoke tends to be thicker and, and more opaque the closer it is to its, uh, its source. So the farther away it is, the more translucent you can make it. And there we have the basic smoke effect. All right, and there you go. That is the simple way of making smoke effects in your digital paintings. So run along and use this however you'd like. Now, obviously, it's not the full scope of how to draw smoke. Because if you want to draw those big plumes and columns of smoke rising into the sky, you might want to check out my tutorial on how to draw clouds, which I'll be making here pretty soon. If you like, you can check back here from time to time, or it'd be a little more helpful for everybody if you hit that subscribe button and maybe even the bell if you're really in a rush. But I'll also be making plenty of tutorials from this point moving forward about how to do lighting and poses and whatever else you might need. If you like to uh, sort of sway my direction one way or the other, leaving a comment will be very helpful. Also, leaving a like on this video if you found it enjoyable or informative is also extremely helpful. And sharing it with someone who you think might be benefited by this tutorial would probably help even more than that, if I'm being honest. All that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.